Hello everyone, and if you're watching this, um, congratulations, it means you've got through your test cuts and set up original setup on your CNC table. I want to welcome you back, and thank you for watching my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, uh, please, do, please do so if you find these videos to be helpful. Um, so if you've got through your tests, um, all your tests, and you've got your table set up, configured, now, now, now comes the exciting part. Now we're actually going to start cutting some stuff out with it. Um, but how do we create... <coughs> drawings within Inkscape to be able to cut them out on our CNC table. Um, as I covered on my um, my last tutorial is uh, when you open up Inkscape um, you always get this default setting. Um, we'll just reconfigure this here to to reflect our table. Um, uh, if you haven't watched my first video um, come down here to document properties. Now if you live in the US we use um, US measurements, um, inches and feet. So this is kind of standard in metric. So we're going to change this to inches. We're going to change our main units to inches. And then we're going to set up our work parameter for our table. That's what this box here is. So my table is 120 inches by 60 inches. I have a 5 by 10 table. And that's pretty much it. So we can close out of here. Now we have our workspace. Now, um, as I'm sure most of you have done before, um, you guys have worked with shop drawings. Um, so we're going to do a basic part here on something that you might have sketched out um, within, you know, for your shop and what you've done. I'm sure you've cut out a lot of parts like this over the years. So I'm going to import this picture so we can kind of work off of it. Now as you can see, typical shop drawing here. Um, we're going to rotate this real quick so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see. We're going to rotate this 90 degrees. So now we have something to work off of. You notice I drag, drag it outside of my work area here. Um, this is a basic base plate for say an I-beam um, anchored into concrete. So this is just kind of give you a rough idea of how we're going to design and build parts um, to be able to actually be able to cut out. So as you can see, um, this is a 10 inch by 10 inch plate, has four three quarter inch holes in it, and there's a quarter inch offset of material between the edge of the holes and the edge of material. So this is what I'm going to show you how to draw today. Um, first, um, let's go ahead and scroll over here a little bit so we have room to work. We're going to come up here and grab our rect square tool. Come there, click, and drag. And you can make us however big you want. Um, we can reset the size of it here in a second. Um, as I mentioned in my other video, I always do black and white. Um, but when I'm working with certain um, or certain designs, I do use multiple colors just to make it easier for you to see and work with. So we're going to start out here with a black square. Now first we know this square needs to be 10 inches by 10 inches. So we're going to come up here and grab our select tool. As you can see, our box is selected. We're going to come up here to width and height, and we're going to change this to 10 inches. We'll change our height to 10 inches. Now we have a perfectly 10 inch by 10 inch square. Now, um, for the holes. Now, we see that um, there, then we need to cut their three quarter inch holes, and they're a quarter inch off both, both leading edges of the plate. Now you can make us whatever you want, but I'm just going to show you how to how to do it here. Um, and we're going to be using our rulers today and our edge guides. These things are going to be are very helpful with you, especially with this program. Um, for those that have worked in, in AutoCAD, you're going to be scratching your head. <laughs> it's, it's a little more involved. Um, AutoCAD is a lot, a lot easier to design these parts, but um, I'll do a tutorial on that for another day. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll in here. Now we know we're going to be quarter inch off all four leading edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull over our edge guides. Now if you don't know what edge, edge guides is, don't worry about it. I'm getting ready to show you. If you come up here and hold here on that little arrow, okay, I can pull down these guides. And I will line this up the best I can with this measurement here. Okay, 
Now we have this guide set. Now we're going to come in the two inches here. So, so let's come down here a little bit further down on the screen and bring this here over. So we're going to set this to two. And when you scroll in, you can get this a lot closer and be a lot more accurate. This, for some things, um, Inkscape is kind of crude on it. It takes you a minute to do. It's definitely not as accurate for CAD, but on something like this, normally you got a little bit of play and then play with anyway, so it's a perfect, perfect program for it. So now we're going to grab this. We're going to bring it up here. See, I automatically snap to the corner. Now these snap settings are access your snap settings by document properties as well. We'll come up here to snaps. You can set the distance. You can set where it snaps to and just make the makes life a little bit more easy for you. But now we've got two edge guides here set. So we're going to go ahead and drag down two more. So we're going to bring this down here. And then we're going to bring another one from over here. Okay, now we're going to scroll in here a little bit. Now we know we need to be a quarter inch. These are where these shortcuts really come in handy, guys. Um, now you know we're going to be need to be a quarter inch in. So I have my ruler set for standard, standard U.S. measurements. So this would be a half inch, this would be a quarter inch. So now we're going to drag our guides in to a quarter inch in. Same for this one here. We're going to drag this down to a quarter of an inch. Okay, now we've got this corner here set. We're going to scroll down. We're going to bring this one up. So the more you can scroll in here, the more accurate you're going to be with this. Okay, there's a quarter of an inch. Now we've got one more to set. Let me zoom in here a little bit so it scrolls over quicker. Scroll back in. And that should be a quarter. Whoops, didn't move. You gotta get the, gotta get that just right for it to move. But okay, so this would be a quarter of an inch here. Okay, so now we have our guidelines set for a quarter of an inch. Okay, now that we got our guide corner set, now what do we do? Um, now we're going to go ahead and draw a three-quarter inch circle. So we're gonna grab your circle tool, come down here. Now, if you hold your sh Control and Shift key, this will make a perfect circle or an oblong, but um, if you come down at a 45 degree angle from the piece, it creates a perfect circle. Now, like I said, if you want to do an elliptical or or a radius, you, know, you can adjust this wherever you want. But for today, we're going to make a perfect circle. So we're going to scroll this down and while I'm holding the control and the shift key. Now we have a perfect circle. Now we're going to set the size of this circle. Um, with circles or squares, a lot of times I'll come up here in this little lock icon I will go ahead and select on that. So when you change one measurement, it stays scaled and put into proportion as this scales up. Otherwise, a lot of times it'll turn into, instead of being a square, it'll turn into a rectangle or it'll turn this into an oblong. So now we've got this locked. So we know we need a three quarter inch circle. Um, so we can just put 0.75, enter. And you notice it automatically changed our height as well. Now, if we drag this over here, you're not gonna really gonna be able to see it now, are we? Um, just what I normally do here is to make it easier to see. I'll change the color of this to a green or whatever color that you can see very, see well. And we're gonna scroll up. And then we're just gonna come up here and line these up with these two guides. Now for this tutorial, I'm not gonna make this perfect, but it'll be close. because you guys can get the little gist of it. Now, you don't have to draw out four perfect, circle, four perfect circles and then drag and drop them. Um, there's another shortcut that you can do here when you're making multiple of one thing. Um, grab your select tool, click on what you want to duplicate. On your keyboard, cl 
click on Control D at the same time. Hold your Control key down. Now we have another circle. And we're going to scroll this over. And as you can see, I got that pretty damn close the first time. Yep, now I need to come over just a little bit more. Like I said, some parts and stuff, I mean, if you've got a little bit of wiggle room and just you make it just makes it quicker if you can do this here. Um, so we're going to hold the shift key down because now we're going to select both of them. Now you see that we have both of them selected. Now we're going to hit control D and hold our control key down. Now we're going to scroll both of them down. And I got that guide off. So we're going to scroll this up here a little bit. We're going to reset this guide here. Okay, that looks a little better. <coughs> okay, now we're going to hold control back down. We're going to bring these down and line this up with the bottom. It's pretty daggone close. Okay, so now we have four holes that are three quarter inch, a quarter inch offset from the edge of our piece, as you can see from our original shop drawing. Um, pretty much uh, the drawing part is done. Um, now we have, once we get everything the way we want it, we can come back here and all, we're, all I'm doing is hovering over these guidelines. Just hit delete. Um, we'll hit delete again. Hit delete again. And hit delete again. Now our guidelines are gone. Now to, for Inkscape, or I am for sheet cam to be able to recognize that these are holes and it needs to, to create a pierce and cut through. Now what we're going to have to cut these holes here into this piece here. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Come up to your icon here just below. Now this is for selecting nodes. If you don't know what nodes are, when I select on this, see these three dots and the two squares and around? Those are your nodes. And no matter what you select on, there's going to be nodes. And <clears throat> on your design and overall work here, if you, the more nodes you have, the more jittery your cut lines are going to be, and also, you know, the longer it takes to process the data because there's a lot more radiuses and uh, to configure within sheet cam. So when you import these with a lot of nodes, sometimes it does take a few minutes to import them. This one here shouldn't take, but just a second to import for you. But now, how do we cut these holes, these four green holes, into this black square? Um, we're going to come up here and we're going to make sure nothing's selected. We're going to select on um, the holes we want to cut into. We're going to hold the shift key down. We're going to select all four holes. Now you can do this one at a time, but if uh, a lot of times you can do multiples. Um, now we're let off the shift key. We're going to push shift key back down, and we're going to click on the place that we want to cut the holes into, or the area. As you can see, our nodes are selected uh, for our corners and also all for all four circles. <coughs> From here, come up to path. Now, within path here, there's a lot of tools that you're going to be using. Uh, object to path, if you're working with letters. Um, uh, trace bitmap, uh, which I'll get into later. Um, union, difference, intersection, exclusion, division, and cut path. These right here are the ones that you're going to be using a lot. <coughs> and I do apologize, it's, it's allergy season. Um, for this right here, this tutorial here, we're going to be using exclusion because we're wanting to exclude those four circles from the black square. Now we're going to go and click on it. And as you can see, it automatically cut this, cut those four green circles in. And the white is your background, obviously, and then your black will be your metal. This is as easy as it is to create basic, basic drawings within Inkscape. Now, from here, I would save this on a computer and import it into Sheet Cam, or if you do your design work on a on a separate PC, um, save it and then save it to a jump drive, take it out to your shop, import it in, and go and get it cut out and that's pretty much it um, if you found this video to be useful um, please like like and subscribe to our channel I will be coming up with more tutorials like this to get you help get you started on how to navigate this thing called Inkscape and how to uh, work work with sheet cam again if you guys have any questions on what I've done here or how I 
do what I do, just, just ask. I'll be more than happy to help you. But when you're doing like I'm doing here, just make sure you delete this here before you save it because whatever you save, um, Sheet Cam will try to import. So just kind of scroll out and make sure that everything's good to go. But we're going to go ahead and scroll this down here and put this down here in the bottom left hand corner like I always do. I scan up here to make sure that there's nothing to be selected because that's where I just moved it from. I have had a, a couple occasions to where there will be a node, one of those one of those little circles or squares here for your corners or your radiuses. They'll be up here from where I edited. And when you <laughs> enter this into sheet cam, your table will come up here in the middle of nowhere and make a pierce and then come back down to the next, next cut. So just a few little tips stuff I'm giving you guys um, to help help you along. Um, uh, keep you from making some of the mistakes of me and some of the, some guys like myself has made over the years. So, um, again, if you like this video, like and subscribe, and I will come out with further tutorials to help you along. Have a good day.